September 1st was a bad day for France back in 1870. That's when they lost the Battle of Sedan in the Franco-Prussian War. The next day, their army and their hapless Emperor Napoleon III surrendered, and that was the end of his regime. Which, as far as it goes, was good for France. They were well rid of this incompetent meddler who prompted Hegel's acid jive that history repeats itself the first time as tragedy and the second time as farce. But the longer-term consequences of the battle were very bad for France and for the world. The first of these, or the short-term, long-term consequence, was that after the Second Empire fell, the Third Republic proclaimed itself, tried to continue the war, they lost. That led to the bloody utopian Paris Commune. Worse, while the French were slaughtering one another over high ideals, Bismarck and his colleagues were completing the reunification of Germany under Prussian auspices that had already involved two wars in the 1860s. And Germany, as a unified nation, was a malevolent actor in the world. Kaiser Wilhelm II was not Hitler, but his ambitions and the popular support that existed for them did cause the First World War, which in turn caused the Second World War. And the Kaiser was quite a malevolent man. Even more profound, I think, is the fact that the Franco-Prussian War being such a quick affair, from the mobilization of armies to the surrender at Sedan took less than two months, convinced everybody, not just the French, but the Germans, virtually all observers, that if a major European war were to take place in, let's just say, 1914, it too would be quick. And looking back, it's easy to see that there were good reasons why that wouldn't happen. One of these, of course, is the American Civil War. And Europeans would have paid a lot more attention to what had happened there. There's five years with battlefields that resembled slaughterhouses. And also the Russo-Japanese War of 1904-1905, which was somewhat quicker, but also very bloody. If they hadn't seen a battle that was much more in the tradition of Napoleonic battles, meaning the first Napoleon, not so much in that France won them, as that they were quick, decisive clashes. It's easy to overstate the benefits of hindsight, because... We could say, oh, well, they didn't understand the incredible destructive power of modern armies that were bound to produce a stalemate on the Western Front. That's by no means necessarily true. That increasing destructive power, logistical support, and mobility might indeed have meant that the stronger side won a quick victory, as the Germans almost did in the fall of 1914. But there should have been more attention paid to the possibility of a really long destructive conflict and casualties on a scale the world had never seen before, or almost never. Again, it's a sometimes forgotten fact that the English Civil War in the 17th century was more deadly per capita to the population of the British Isles than the First World War was. All of this does remind us that in drawing the lessons of hindsight, we have to be careful. We can't be glib or fatuous. And this is all discussed in my documentary, The Great War Remembered, and there will be a book to accompanying that documentary and based on it that's going to appear this fall, so please keep an eye out for that. But with those cautions, we can still understand the ways in which people do learn from history and the ways in which they learn wrong things from history, including looking at the Battle of Sedan and thinking it's okay to go to war in the early 20th century because even if there are some pretty bloody battles, it'll all be over fast. As we know now, nothing of the sort happened. And there are reasons in retrospect that we can see why. September 1st, 1870 is one of the reasons people didn't see that in time for the First World War. And that makes it a bad day, not just for France, but for everybody. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.